Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jessica Dodds, and I'd like to welcome you to my presentation, which is titled, What's Age Got to Do With It? Exploring the Roles of Social Workers as Discharge Planners with Young Adult Survivors of Stroke. I'd like to thank you for your interest in this topic, whether you're a social worker, a practitioner from another field, or a student. Today, I'll be introducing you to the research project that I have conducted as part of my thesis over the past 12 months. Something I would not have been able to come this far without the dedication and support of my Chief Investigator, Professor Mel Gray, Unofficial Supervisor, Melina Heinch, my Social Work colleague, Eliza Richards, and the love and understanding of my friends and family. The study involved social workers in the Newcastle and Central Coast region and explored their experiences and decisions when discharge planning for adult survivors of stroke under 65. To give an overview of my presentation, firstly, I'll outline the rationale behind why I chose to focus on this topic and its significance to social work practice. I'll then cover briefly about some of the key findings in the literature review I conducted, which informed my research aims and ultimately shaped the questions to be explored. Following from this, I'll then outline the methodology I chose, introduce some of the key findings and themes that emerged from the interviews. I will critically analyse the findings before conducting with some possible directions to improve future practice in this area. In March 2013, I embarked on my first professional social work placement at Gosford Hospital. During this time, I was based in the cardiac ward for three days a week, and on the other two days, I was encouraged by my field educator to immerse myself in a range of other experiences around the hospital. And so I did just that. This is a picture of me getting into the spirit of that and helping out with the opening of the Ronald McDonald family room next to the children's ward. So following from the advice of my field educator, I organised to spend time with a number of social workers in a few different wards at both Gosford and Wyong hospitals. And it was here that I was initially exposed to the issue of younger adults experiencing stroke. Whilst it was confronting for me to think that people my own age group could have serious health issues such as this, I was intrigued by the role which social workers played in supporting these people and what impact being at a younger age and therefore a different life stage meant for long-term care after discharge from hospital or rehabilitation. One of the leading causes of brain injury in Australia today is stroke where the supply of blood to the brain is stopped by a clot or bleeding. Although strokes are most common in older adults, over 65, there is an increasing amount of strokes occurring in younger adults. One of the key moments when a social worker will engage with stroke survivors is leading up to and at the time of discharge from hospital or rehabilitation. It's at this critical time that decisions are made around long-term accommodation and care options, such as placement in aged care facilities. From my observations on placement, the link between discharge destination and discharge planning lies with decision-making, which is influenced by professional knowledge and other factors, including values and perceptions about the person. In researching this topic, I was particularly interested in the factors which shaped social work decisions in discharge planning and how this impacts on post-discharge accommodation and other issues. So in the beginning of the research, I conducted a literature review with the aim to identify contemporary research pertaining to the role of social workers with survivors of stroke and factors which impacted on their decisions when engaged in discharge planning. During the initial search, three key themes emerged. 
Firstly, there was consistency across the literature that physical functioning and cognitive abilities held significant value in predicting the prognosis for the stroke survivor and thus post-discharge accommodation. Little emphasis was placed on the stroke survivors or families' preference for long-term accommodation. Secondly, there, was, there were common themes across a number of articles that highlight the shared role of discharge planning with nurses. Davis and colleagues, 2004, highlights the difficulties this creates around a social worker's ability to claim a specific role in supporting the stroke provider. This led me to question, well, why not just leave discharge planning to nurses? However, it is the social worker's unique body of accumulated knowledge and skills that distinguishes the role of social work from that of other disciplines. Specifically, highlighting the person in the environment in the biopsychosocial assessment process is considered critical to the success of discharge planning in these cases. The final theme evident from the research was that there are multiple systemic challenges social workers face when engaged in discharge planning, including time constraints, organisational culture and limited provision of services. Limitations of this review highlighted that the majority of research focused heavily on factors involved with older stroke survivors over 65. Whilst I acknowledge that this is due to the majority of strokes occurring in this age group, there was a lack of recognition of the issues specific to younger adults due to their different life stage. Furthermore, there is a gap in current knowledge within the past 10 years about the role of social workers with stroke survivors as much of the research in this area was over 15 years old. Therefore, the present study aims to make a valuable addition to contemporary research around practice with stroke survivors, in addition to social work practice in hospital settings in an Australian context. So the purpose of my research was to explore the factors and values which shape social workers' decisions when discharge planning for young adult survivors of stroke. Additionally, the present study aimed to identify unique issues faced by younger stroke survivors. My research question therefore was, what are the factors and values that shape social work decisions in discharge planning for young adult survivors of stroke? In designing my study, I wanted to gather rich and detailed collection of social work experiences in both hospital and rehabilitation settings. Given the nature of the research question and exploratory aims, qualitative methods of data collection and analysis was considered the best methods for the study. These methods included using purposive sampling and semi-structured face-to-face interviews the latter of which included open-ended questions and the use of probes to encourage participants to provide in-depth accounts of their experiences. I chose this method of data collection as face-to-face -face interviews often allow for a higher response rate, greater flexibility and control of the environment and a greater chance of spontaneity in participant answers. In total, Six interviews with seven participants were completed between April and May 2014 across a two-week time frame at their place of employment. Participants were recruited from five hospitals in the Newcastle and Central Coast region and all were required to hold social work qualifications and work in either hospital or rehabilitation wards with current or past experience working with young adult stroke survivors. In addition to using qualitative methods for this study, I chose to keep within a qualitative worldview. A qualitative research worldview is different from that of quantitative in that it embodies an interpretive way of thinking. An interpretive way of thinking is based on the premise that reality is defined by the researcher's participants' interpretation of their own realities. At the present, as the present study aimed to explore the issues facing younger stroke survivors. This cannot be undertaken without exploring their social environment and life stage. 
Therefore, Bronfen Brenner's 1992 Ecological Systems Theory and Erickson's 1959 Psychosocial Stages of Development were considered key part of the theoretical framework that ultimately shaped the way in which the data was analysed and interpreted. The data was then transcribed verbatim and participants were given the opportunity to review and admit data. Qualitative data analysis methods were used whereby the data was uh, uploaded into NVivo software and coded and then a thematic analysis was applied. So the research was approved by the University of Newcastle Re Human Research Ethics Committee in February this year and subsequently approved it by the Hunter New England Human Research Ethics Committee in April this year. Maximum care was taken to ensure that the research was carried out ethically. Voluntary participation was maintained through the research during the recruitment phases through to the interviews. Participants were recruited through their manager or director of social work and were given the opportunity to contact me if they were interested in participating. Additionally, at the beginning of each interview, participants were reminded of the, of the voluntary nature of their participation and informed that they could withdraw from the study at any stage without penalty. Confidentiality and anonymity of each participant was ensured through careful handling of all electronic and hard copies of consent forms, audio interview files and transcripts. After confirming participants' approval of the content within the transcripts, participants and the organisation names were replaced with code names and pseudonyms. Hard copies of transcripts consent forms were kept in a locked filing cabinet in the Chief Investigator's Office. Main limitations of the study included a small participant sample, which was hindered greatly by the time, limited time caused by the second ethics process. So as I'm currently still in the process of analysing and writing up the data, the following will be a presentation of my preliminary results only. Results from the interviews focus on three key areas. These areas were factors that influence decision making, barriers to decision making, and issues impacting on young stroke survivors due to their different life stage. Factors that influence decision making. Across both hospital and rehabilitation wards, participants all stated that their decisions in discharge planning is a team decision from a multi made from the multidisciplinary team. When describing the factors that impact on team decisions versus social work decisions, one participant had stated, decision making as a team is based around discharge planning. The team's consideration is based more around the physical, whereas the social workers will advocate for the emotional side of things, family perspectives and patient perspectives. Her statement here was an echo of many of my other participants' responses around this issue. In addition to the physical and cognitive factors, participants overall identified the following factors which are used to shape their decisions from a social work perspective. These included the family and carers of the stroke survivor, emotional and social supports, financial circumstances, housing issues, culture and or religion or spirituality, the psychological mood of the stroke survivor, and of course, carer stress. Common barriers that hindered or slowed decision-making were identified by the participants as time constraints, being understaffed, coming from a different value base to other colleagues, Organisational press, pressures, such as keeping a, a constant flow of patients and, and be constantly aware of bed flow. And of course, limited service provision and access to these services. Connected to lack of services was the difficulty in accessing services that did exist out there. 
One participant, when discussing the barriers for younger adults who required placement in aged care, stated that to enter care, you have to be on an income. So you have to set them, that's the patient, up with something like a disability support pension. But with the new government legislation that's currently being handed out, it's actually very difficult to get on a disability support pension. When asked about whether younger adults have different needs to older adults after having a stroke, all participants unanimously agreed that there were a host of issues that impact on younger adults due to their different life stage. Some of these key issues that they discussed included income and connected to this was around the loss of capacity to work and be able to drive and be independent following the stroke. Housing. These were in instances where loss of income or work and then the stress that this placed on the stroke survivor and their family, particularly if they were the main wage earner for the family. Also, change in family roles. Young parents who needed to go into care and lost their roles as a parent. And in other cases, older parents would become carers for their adults' children following stroke. So the preliminary findings from the research provide interesting insight into the role of social workers as discharge planners with young adult survivors of stroke. The findings suggest that when discharge planning for stroke survivors, decisions are a shared role between members of a multidisciplinary team. Within these teams, clinical and medical needs tend to constitute the main focus of decisions for the stroke survivor, rather than a holistic view. However, literature highlights that by encompassing a holistic view, social workers can better understand the broader issues which can impact on a positive recovery outside physical functioning. These findings concur with this as participants discuss the importance of focusing holistically on factors including social, emotional, psychological and cultural factors when engaging in discharge planning. When discharge planning for stroke survivors, what does age have to do with it? Well, younger adults under 65 who experience a stroke will often require more complex interventions from social workers. These include assistance with finances, housing, children and employment. However, the most challenging issue to this that has been identified through this study is that it has been around the lack of suitable age-appropriate accommodation and places of residence for young stroke survivors to help in their rehabilitation after discharge from hospital or rehabilitation. In light of the research explored, what lessons can be learned from Australian social work practice? In wrapping up my interviews with participants, I asked each one of them what would they change about their job or what would they what would benefit what would be of benefit to advance social work practice in their area? Some of their answers included educating staff around stroke and different cultures, age-appropriate care facilities, not just for young people, but also facilities that are specific for long-term stroke rehabilitation, including family rooms on the ward, having a recovery-friendly ward, and also about the importance of creating links with key agencies and services to keep up to date with what is available to refer their patients to after discharge. I'd like to thank you for your interest in this topic and listening to my presentation. And I invite you to ask any questions.